energy locked deep inside the atom. Einstein suspected that it would take a hundred years of research to unlock it, but he hadn't banked on the Second World War and the genius of a Jewish woman in Hitler's Germany. Einstein had astounded the world with E equals MC squared. It said that every single object in the universe is just a piece of immensely compressed energy. The amount of energy in an object is equal to its mass times C, the speed of light, squared. In other words, its energy is equal to its mass times 90 billion billion. But it would not be Einstein who would unlock this vast energy. Twenty-eight-year-old Austrian Lisa Meitner was painfully shy. Despite her anxiety, the young doctor of physics arrived in Berlin determined to pursue a career in the exciting new field of radioactivity. Unfortunately, in 1907, German universities did not employ women graduates. Luckily, one man came to her aid. Fräulein Meitner. Yes? Otto Hahn. I'm a researcher in the Chemistry Institute. Professor Planck suggested I... Hey, Hahn, I have read your papers on thorium and on mesothorium, and uh, Dr. Planck suggested that Yes, I, he suggested I, that I speak with you. I need someone to collaborate with. I think I could really help with the physical analysis. And the mathematics. Yes, yes. And the mathematics. Studying radioactive atoms has become so much a collaboration between chemistry and physics these days. Yes, yes. I'll ask Fischer for a laboratory, then. Excellent. I'll speak to you soon. Lisa Meitner had just taken the first step on a journey that would irrevocably change world history. For her, it would be a road marked with success and renown, but also terror and betrayal. At this time, not a lot was known about the atom. At first, people thought it was uh, like a miniature solar system. There was a solid nucleus at the center, and electrons would spin around it, sort of like, um, like planets around our sun. A little later, some researchers proposed that the nucleus itself wasn't a solid chunk, but it was made up of separate particles of protons and neutrons. But then, in what are called radioactive metals, things like radium and uranium, the nucleus itself seemed to be unstable, leaking out energy and particles. Perhaps this was an example of e equals mc squared the mass of a nucleus turning into energy. Meitner and Hahn's collaboration to unlock the secrets of the atom started out on an extremely unequal footing. He was given a laboratory, she was forced to work in a woodshed. I see you haven't set your hair on fire. Herr yeah, Hahn? The boss, he thinks that if he lets women into the chemistry institute, they'll set their hair on fire. Oh. So his beard must be fireproof. <laughs> Good day, Herr yeah. Good day. You see, I am non-existent to this place. At least physicists recognize me for my abilities. Yes, where would we chemists be without the steading hand of the physicist? It took years, uh, but Lisa lost her shyness eventually. In 1912, she and Hahn moved to the brand new Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Chemistry, where the status was really that of equals. Lisa became the first woman in Germany ever to have the title of professor.
Lisa. I am Muse. Remember the art student I told you of? Yes, Edith. Yes, well, I have um, asked her to marry me, and she has accepted. Oh, oh Dr. Han, congratulations. Yes, well, I wanted you to be the first to know. Oh, I'm very pleased for you. Very pleased. Lisa Meitner was warm-hearted by nature. She had many friends, and she may have wanted to have a closer relationship with Otto, but it really does seem that physics was Lisa's first love, maybe even her passion. The 1920s and 30s were the golden age of nuclear research. The largest known nucleus of the time was that of the uranium atom, containing 238 protons and neutrons. Meitner and Hahn were leading the race to see if even bigger nuclei could be created by adding more neutrons. The nucleus is our focus. The nucleus made up of protons and neutrons. Now, the largest nucleus that we know is that of the uranium atom. Its nucleus is a tightly packed structure of 200 and 38 protons and neutrons. The thrust of our work is to try to fire neutrons into this huge structure. And if we can get a neutron to stick in here, it will be a breakthrough. Meitner may have been on the brink of a major discovery, but Germany in the 1930s was a dangerous place to be, even for a world-class scientist. The Jewess endangers our institute. Unlike many other Jewish scientists, Meitner refused to leave her work. By 1938, her situation had become perilous. The pressure on them all was unbearable. Hahn, who was known for his anti-Nazi views, did his best to protect her, at least initially. I need to talk to you about this. Uh, not now, I'm too busy. We have to protect her. How? What can we do? The situation is the way it is. Who knows what will happen next? She can't stay. It's just not tenable. But she hasn't got a visa or even a valid passport. And she may soon be forbidden to leave Germany. We can't harbor a Jew. If she stays, the regime will shut us all down. Lisa. All line demands that you leave. You can't throw her out. All line says you should not come into the institute anymore. When it became clear that Meitner would be dismissed and probably arrested, physicists all around Europe desperately wrote letters inviting her to conferences to give her an excuse to leave Germany. The Nazis refused her permission. In July of 1938, a friend, a Dutch colleague, traveled to Berlin and illegally took Lisa back with him on a train to Holland. The trip was so frightening for her that at one point she begged to go back. Despite the great danger, she got through. <laughs> 